Hey, welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you're doing well. So it's auction season, summer auction season is in full swing. And today I'm going to discuss my seven favorite watches from the Hong Kong watch auction number eight. This auction took place in late May and it was a mix of modern and vintage pieces, which for me it was great because I do enjoy a lot of modern watches, but I am a vintage guy at heart. So it was cool to see what watches they ended up sourcing and selling at this auction. Um, and um, I, I enjoyed seeing what prices they also fetched into. I'll get into that with some of my picks for sure. There were some big results, some big pieces that went for some great, great large amounts of money, but there were also some sleepers and I'll discuss that as well with one of my picks. Um, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. If you haven't already, I say it every video. If you wouldn't mind liking this video, that really would help us out and comment below. Once you've liked it, that would also help us out. Um, so my first lot that I really enjoyed from this uh, watch auction that occurred in uh, Hong Kong was lot number 933. This was a Rolex um, GMT reference 16753F. So um, this watch is obviously a stainless steel watch, uh, stainless steel and yellow gold watch, GMT version, nicknamed the root beer. Um, and it definitely has a lot of patina on the dial. You can see at the hour markers, there is a little bit of wear that has taken place. But the reason why this is one of my favorite watches that went at this auction is the fact that it was a rare variant. Um, like I said in the reference, it had an F at the end. Um, and this, according to research, is an indication to watchmakers of the gold value within the bezel of the watch. So this is, in my opinion, a very beautiful it has patinaed in a very beautiful way. It always, for some reason, reminds me of a Spanish flag, but um, it's, it's got some beautiful patina on it, but also it's super rare um, within a specific reference of Rolex, which is something that you kind of want, especially because everyone is a Rolex collector at heart. So um, having that F at the end kind of gives it a little bit of a rarity a feature to it. Um, this ended up um, selling for o over almost over double what the estimated, um, the top estimated price for this watch was, ended up going for 93,750 Hong Kong dollars, which is approximately 12,000 US dollars. So that was my first pick. My second pick is lot number 942. This was the Rolex Yachtmaster Haribo on a rubber strap. This is obviously not really my taste, probably something you will never see on my wrist, but it is definitely cool and you have to appreciate it for the watch that it is. Um, it's got multicolored sapphires all around the bezel of the watch that look like Haribo and for people who do not know what Haribo are They are little gummy bears that are from Switzerland. Or I believe they're from uh, Switzerland um, And so it's multicolored looks like you've got a bunch of, um, of, of Gummy bears around the outside of your watch um, It ended up selling for 862,500 Hong Kong Hong Kong dollars, which is more than what was estimated um, which is approximately 1,100 US dollars. My second, my third favorite um, lot from the Hong Kong watch auction number eight was the MBNF Legacy Machine Perpetual. As you are well aware at this point, I am one of the biggest fans of MBNH, uh, MBNF, excuse me. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of MBNF. Um, this Legacy Machine Perpetual has a skeletonized dial, perpetual calendar. Um, this version was in pink gold and obviously has that iconic flying balance wheel. This was a limited piece of 25 that MBNF released, and this was actually number 25. So this was the last one that they produced. Um, this is an amazing watch from MBNF. Um, and it it sold extremely quickly when they when they create when they first released it, and obviously it sold very strong, even though um, it's very it's a very, very different type of watch. You have to be a specific type of collector to enjoy. MBNF's watches, especially this Legacy Machine Perpetual, um, it ended up selling for 875,000 Hong Kong dollars, which um, was in line with the estimate. It went, which is about 111,000 US dollars. Um, so again, I can't, I can't forget about MBNF at watch auctions. <laughs> um, my fourth favorite watch from this um, watch auction was Lot 1000. This was a the Alangan Zuna Platinum Turbion Lange One. Um, Hanswerk Kunst, this was um, basically a watch that was released to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Lange One. It was only made in a limited amount of uh, pieces, there were only 20 created and this is number 18. I mean, I think 
Alang and Zuna is a watch company that is slowly getting more appreciation from watch collectors, but they can they have made some of the most beautiful watches ever, and this this Tourbillon is a perfect example of that. Um, it sold for 1.75 million Hong Kong dollars, which is the, at the higher end of what it was estimated to sell for, which was approximately 224,000 US dollars. Um, again, if you if you can kind of see, I like I I've kind of been picking ones that are rare that you're not going to see very often, and um, things that are unique because that's the type of collecting that I like to do, and I'm sure many of you like to do. So lot number not, lot number four or lot number 1,000 was my fourth pick, which is the Alang and Zuna Platinum Turbion Lango One. Um, Hanswerk Kunst. My fifth lot was actually probably the simplest of all the watches that I've picked for my top watches from this auction. And that was just lot number uh, 1014. This was a very simple Hoyer Skipper. Um, it's a very simple chronograph, but it's such a cool chronograph. It's the perfect summer watch. As you know, I'm very into blue dials. This is an absolutely beautiful watch um, with its blue dial. I like if, you, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm a huge fan of a watch called the Memo Sale, which is another yacht timer. This was a watch that was kind of competing with the Hoyer Skipper, um, but I, I, loved, I loved seeing that at least there's some appreciation for the Hoyer Skipper. There's also the, the um, Hodinkee um, edition of the Hoyer Skipper that they released in, in limited amount. I think that's a perfect way to play, pay homage to such a beautiful watch. So. Um, it was exciting for me to see the Hoyer Skipper there, and it was exciting for me to see that people appreciated it. Um, it sold for 81,250 Hong Kong dollars, which is actually actually at the low end of the estimate, um, which was 10,000 US dollars. Um, so that's probably the simplest of my seven picks. Uh, number six, my sixth favorite watch from the Hong Kong watch auction was lot number 1084. This was the AP Carbon Concept. Um, this was obviously modeled after the AP Royal Oak design, but the case was made out of forged carbon and ceramic. Um, it's also a skeletonized dial. It it's a tourbillon chronograph and it has a power reserve of 237 hours, which is astronomical, uh, first of all, but also it's a very um, distinct watch to wear on your wrist. It's probably a little bit too big for my wrist, but it's a very distinct watch, and I like the fact that, that watch companies are playing around with the case metals. Um, so, lot number my sixth favorite was lot number 1084. This was this watch was actually sold in Taiwan. It has the a warranty with the stamp of the jeweler that it was sold from. Um, it didn't actually reach the price in order to be sold. So this was, in my opinion, one of the sleepers of, of the auction. I don't know if perhaps the uh, valuation or the, the estimated price um, was too high or the reserve was too high, but um, it ended up not selling. That's just what happens at auction. Some lots are, are passed on, and, and in my opinion, this one was definitely a sleeper. Um, and my last lot is number seven of my um, favorite watches from the Hong Kong watch auction, number eight. This was lot number 1159. And you would have guessed it if you know me. This was the MBNF LM1 Legacy, Legacy Machine Number no. One in rose gold. This is easily my favorite modern watch, um, and it's a watch that I really, really would love to add to my collection. Um, obviously, the uh, Legacy Machine Number no. One has its very iconic flying balance wheel on top of the dial that you can see. It also was the first watch to have a vertical power reserve indicator and it came with everything, box, papers, you name it, and it was sold in 2013. Um, and that's what you know the papers stipulate. Obviously, I'm going to have to have this as my, la my last and most, and my favorite watch from the, the Hong Kong watch auction number eight. Um, this ended up selling for 287,500 Hong Kong dollars, which is approximately 37,000 US dollars. I like the fact that it actually did sell and now I have a, a relative price range for how much I'm going to need to save up in order to purchase uh, an LM1 uh, from MBNF or from a secondhand um, dealer. Um, I'm probably biased in, the, in my picks, but I'm sure just like you would be, you were also going to be probably biased in the watches that you pick for, for your seven favorite watches. 
Um, but those are my favorites. So um, just to recap, my first one was a Rolex GMT root beer, reference 16753F with a very um, rare uh, variant um, indicating with that F at the end of the reference number. The second was the Rolex Yachtmaster Haribo. The third was the MBNF Legacy Machine Perpetual. The fourth was the Alang and Zöna Platinum Turbion Lange One Hans Kunst, Hanswerk Kunst um, Limited Edition piece. My fifth was a Hoyer Skipper. My sixth was an AP Carbon Concept um, Royal Oak. Um, and my seventh was the MBNF Legacy, Legacy Machine Number One. I would love to know what you guys think about my picks. Let me know what your favorite lot from the um, auction was. I would love to hear it in the comments. And if you haven't already, would love if you smash that like button, really would help us out. Uh, if you like videos about watches, we make videos about just about any topic in watches, um, from auctions to reviews to uh, news to reacting to things that happen on Instagram, all kinds of things. So if you like that type of content, would love if you could subscribe to our channel, join the Life on the Wrist family. And with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a nice rest of your day.